Hi, this is Chris from Code Review Videos, and in this video, we're going to be looking at Ansible Galaxy. So we've already seen Ansible Galaxy in action a few times throughout this tutorial series, and now we're actually going to take a proper look at it and cover some of the points that I've mentioned throughout the series on my sort of pros and cons on why I like Ansible Galaxy and why I don't use it in perhaps the way that you might expect. To begin with, let's cover what Ansible Galaxy actually is. It's a way of finding and reusing existing roles that people have created in the Ansible community. So there's pretty much a role for the vast majority of things that you would want to do on a system. As we, you can see here, it's still set up from users. We've done that in, a, I think it was a couple of videos ago, we was looking at this um, Mivoc. Uh, user role to do our user management but there's roles for literally I mean absolutely everything and if there isn't a role um, then I'd be very surprised honestly but yeah I mean as we've covered throughout this series creating your own is um, not that difficult really it's mainly just listing out the steps that you would go through manually but as I say the vast majority of uh, utilities and services and stuff have already got a role created for them and it's just a case of finding the one that you want to to look at or the one that you're interested in and then the way that I do it is just go off reverse average score so you get the community's uh, sort of guidelines on which is the best bundle I mean it's obviously very subjective and these scores should be taken a little bit with a pinch of salt but that is the way that I use it and then generally once you go into a role uh, I would go across to the github repo so then have a look at like the tasks and see what's going on so jump into the main have a look at what's going on here and then we can go back and you know obviously you can see here that it's going doing this elastic search role and you can see like the steps that it's going to go through uh, and you can learn quite a lot from doing this as well i mean you can i found that my playbooks generally or my roles generally uh, improved dramatically when i i started looking at people's um, ansible galaxy roles and the other thing to do, of course, is always look at the defaults and see these are the things that you're going to be setting up in your projects. So, yeah, worthwhile taking a look at those uh, as, as you use any of the roles. So if we jump back to the Ansible Galaxy page there for the Elasticsearch role, there is a instructions, a little set of instructions here on how to install it. So Ansible Galaxy install ST out Elasticsearch. We'll just go across to our uh, console and you've got to do this from wherever you've installed Ansible. And as we've been doing throughout this series, uh, we've got ours installed on a standalone server. Well, it's a VM, but we're going to paste that in. And this is my first uh, problem with it, really. Because of the way that I use Ansible, then oh, it's not, not installed that. What's gone on? Oh, we need sudo. Uh, so let's just do that. And then that should go off and install. But the problem is that, from my perspective at least, I don't like the fact that now this role only exists on the server. So for me, I would either have to, because I'm deploying from my local, as we've seen throughout this series, I would do a git push and then this would push my changes up to the server. To get those changes, I would probably need to use something like rsync to pull it down from um, the remote. And the other thing that kind of gets me is if we now look at, at this, so if we jump into our roles, well, all our roles that we already know about are there, but we've just installed this Elasticsearch role and we've also installed the um, Mivoc users role, but it's not plainly obvious as to where they would be. So if we just clear that off and jump over to etc Ansible, uh, and let's just look in there. There's a folder in here called roles. And then if we list out the contents, you can see those two roles are there, but as I say, it's not particularly immediately obvious. So you've got to go back into your project somewhere and start keeping track of what requirements you've got. And this is how Ansible Galaxy, the manual page, actually recommends doing this. So if we scroll down somewhere in here, uh, yeah, you're installing multiple roles from a file. So what they would do is suggest that you create this requirements text file uh, in, in here somewhere. So we'll just call this requirements text and this is what I, I actually did to begin with um, but I decided I didn't like it like this so then you would obviously go in and put in the roles that we've got which were like this like that so you would just copy that out paste that in there and then should the uh, sort of the worst happen and you've got to rebuild then you can just do Ansible Galaxy install from your requirements file but as I say it's not particularly 
I mean, I did this and then I wiped my Ansible server and this is what really sort of bugged me in the end. I had maybe 12 different roles that I'd pulled down from Ansible Galaxy and I, I'm still using them. That's not the issue. The issue is that when I deleted or accidentally destroyed my server, which isn't that big of a deal when you're using Ansible, even though it was my Ansible master, um, then I had to go through and I had this requirements file and I, I had to install them and I didn't like it, honestly. I didn't like the fact that my roles were not immediately visible and basically I decided to take a slightly different track but you may not like this but we'll I'll show you what I do now so I would go across to the actual role itself I'd take the github url then in my personal project so in here I would jump into the roles directory and I would do uh, git clone and then paste that in or if it would let me paste it in let's take a copy of that and then paste it in and then what I'd do is jump into that in fact normally what I would do is now I would uh, do a move on ST outs to just Elasticsearch like that and then I change into Elasticsearch and if we look in here there'll be a few directories that um, or a few files that I don't actually want so ls la you can see that there's a git directory a Travis direct uh, Travis file well as we'll see so we'll do rm.git um, rmrf oh, git like that rm.travis and yeah maybe clean up a few of the other things like the test.yaml stuff that I personally wouldn't need because it's not really my um, it's not really my role or whatever but you, I keep the license the contributors or whatever in there the readme file so that I know it's it's not mine and I'm not in any way trying to take credit for it uh, but for me personally, I like to have everything in my roles directory that I'm using in my projects just so that it's quite explicit and I'm not really relying on sort of third party code. Uh, but that's, yeah, that's generally the way that I use it. And then obviously you've got your defaults, which are nice and easy to configure. Obviously, the downside to this is you no longer in sync with the repository, but you have to sort of work out once you've the way I see it is once I've run this playbook and I've tested it, then if it's working, the likelihood of me having to fix anything in there is quite small, honestly. So uh, it's it's kind of a trade-off that I'm willing to make, but the way that you do it may be you know, entirely different. You may see that uh, from the complete polar opposite viewpoint, and of course, you're welcome to do so. So there's two other pieces that I want to cover before I finish out this video. The first one is building out the role scaffolding, which we have actually seen already when we created our underscore templates directory and also installing multiple roles from a file, which is something that may help you. And I just want to make you aware of it rather than go through it. We say building out role scaffolding. So this is a bit of a crazy name for something that we've already done. So if we just clear that off, um, we're just going to jump back to our home directory and the Ansible directory, which is where all our stuff is, and then change into roles. And as you can see, we've got this underscore template directory, which we created a long time ago now. We're just going to do Ansible Galaxy init, and then we're just going to call it whatever, and let that do its thing. And what that's going to do is create another similar thing to this template directory, which is basically a sort of template role directory structure. So if we change into that and have a look, we can see that it's already set up for us in a way that makes it usable um, immediately following Ansible's conventions. So that's quite useful. But again, as we covered in the earlier video where we did look into this in more detail, um, you do have to pull it down from the server because of the way that we're working. If you're working on a local machine, then yeah, so be it. You're not going to hit that issue and you may be able to live with it, whatever. Uh, the other thing, as I say, I'm not going to cover it in too great a detail but you can actually if you're going to go ahead with the requirement style um, you can configure this up quite a lot by sort of changing the names of the files that they'll come down on, uh, as and other things so yeah do look through that it, it is more useful than I kind of give it credit for but in my um, personal sort of usage I found that having the, the roles local to my setup has been a lot easier for me having been through a circumstance where my Ansible master got the, well, I destroyed it for uh, the purposes of freeing up a bit of space urgently, but rebuilding it turned into a bit of an, a bit of a pain, honestly. And so that's when I sort of went down this route of bringing in all my roles into my own 
uh, set up. And as I said, I am not trying to take credit for any of them. Uh, that's entirely not what it's about. It's personal um, sort of ease of use and productivity and just making things a bit more explicit.